Hello, my name is Richard Capone. On today's webinar, I'm going to be starting by giving you a brief demo of Adam K7, which is our latest online diagnostic math assessment. I'd like to start out by pointing out what is so unique about Adam. Well, simply put, Adam is a genuine diagnostic assessment and informs instruction rather than tell teachers what they already know, which is which students are below, at, or above grade level. And what Adam does is inform teachers why a student is doing well or struggling in one of the many subtests of K7 mathematics. To illustrate this point, let me point out a common model of assessment, which is the standards model of assessment. Yes, common core and state standards are important, but when you assess a student via a standards model, the results are summative. Meaning if we look at a group of fourth graders, for instance, we get a horizontal evaluation of their abilities we do not know where their true instructional points lie along these green bars. Therefore, we don't know how to help them exactly. But now if we look at a diagnostic model of assessment, like Adam's, we see that Adam, first of all, breaks all the subtests into their smallest units, which is 44 subtests of K7 mathematics, and it adapts up and down to find the true instructional points of each student. So let me summarize before I show you how Adam actually looks. First of all, Adam is a criterion reference assessment. It's a fully aligned to Common Core and state standards. But it assesses via a diagnostic model of 44 subtests of K7 mathematics. These are reported out under the five NCTM strands that you see here. It also includes critical problem solving questions and uses oral reading of items to remove wrong answers that are due to low reading abilities. Alright, let's take a look at Adam. We're now viewing the scores and reports page of a particular class with Adam K7. We see the total score here in this column as well as the individual strand scores for numbers and operations, measurements, data analysis, geometry, and algebraic thinking. These scores of course are all summative in nature right now because we're rolling up the scores and pro providing a single score. If we want to take a look at a detailed report or a summary report, we come over to the far right column and let's look at the summary report for Leon. Initially we see that, that Leon is in the late fifth grade and we see his individual summary scores in this box. Any green underline means he is on grade level, a red underline means he's below grade level and we see some areas of concern and some areas where we don't have to worry about, areas of strength. Within measurement, he's below grade level in geometry, but he's um, at or above in numbers and operations, data analysis, and algebra. But let's go ahead and take a deeper look. Let's take a look at geometry over here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So if we look at geometry, we say we've broken geometry up into a subtest. Location and direction, 2D shapes, 3D shapes, triangles, quadrilaterals, areas and perimeter, and so on and so forth. These are the actual true subtests of geometry, and this is how you would teach it. Within each of these, we see Great. Location and direction, Leon has it mastered. He's maxed out. In 2D shapes, he's in the 7th grade level. In 3D shapes, he's actually below. He's at the high 3rd grade at the beginning of 4th grade. So these are areas where we can direct our instruction. If we want to know what these specific boxes stand for, right here, this box is his instructional level for 3D shapes. We can go to the detail report and find out exactly what that means. So let's go ahead and do that. For Leon, let's take a look at 3D shapes, the detailed report. I've skipped ahead to the page, the geometry detailed page. Let's zoom in and let's take a look at 3D shapes. Here we see that he has a 3.9 score, just like I stated. He's at high third grade, but his instructional point is the first negative right here. So he needs to work on quantities of three dimensional figures. Okay. That is his instructional point. Likewise, if we take a look at some of these other points, we look into triangles, we see that Leon understands all about triangles, but he just doesn't understand the highest level of triangle instruction, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Basically, these constructs are listed from easiest to highest. So the way one would teach them would be from this direction, moving upward. Now let's take a look at how you could use this data in a classroom setting. Let's take a look at numbers and operations. Now within my class here, I'm going to go ahead and sort by fractions. Let's say today we're working on fractions. Okay, we have the highest scores on top and the lowest on the bottom. So the, the lowest students 
that have an NT for not tested, meaning they weren't taught fractions. But we see all of these students should be learning about concepts about fractions. These other students are at various points. So maybe we want to group these two students who are at 4.2. Let's take a look and find out what that means. We click on the help and we see, okay, a score of 4.2 means they understand fractions, equivalent fractions in lowest terms. However, what they don't understand where they're learning is fractions as decimals and place values, tenths and one hundredths. So this is their instructional point. Likewise, you can do this for any of these subtests whether it's subtraction, multiplication, division, exponents, you can sort your students into small groups and use the scores to cluster them based on actual abilities, actual constructs. So let's now take a look. Let's go back to our summary page. Let's click on a standards report. Again, let's take a look at Leon. So let's go ahead and take a look at how he is doing in fourth grade to seventh grade, right? And let's go ahead and just take a look at the Common Core Standards. So we now see in fourth grade the standards that Adam covers and we see the check boxes meaning he has mastered these standards. If there's a box that is not checked it means he has not mastered them. The advantage here is we can actually look at standards below, many years below or many years above the student. We don't have to limit ourselves to just looking at the grade level. Again, here's sixth grade. A lot of standards are not mastered in sixth grade. But what we're showing you here with Adam is there's an amazing amount of data that you can drill down. And Adam is valid at these detailed levels. It covers 44 subtests. Whether you're going into data analysis, algebraic thinking, measurement, numbers and operation, doesn't matter. The data is there and you can go ahead and select that, drill down, and see exactly how the student is doing in these different areas by looking at the summary, detailed, and standards report.